Hi everyone, welcome back to the Hollywood Actors Guide to Surviving the Film and Television Industry. This is episode number 101. I know I should have been excited at 100, but I didn't even notice. This is episode 101. Thank you for tuning in every week. I very much appreciate it. So let's get started. All right. I heard somebody say that when you go into an audition, you should tell them that you're nervous because it humanizes you. No, 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 no. Maybe in a student film, maybe, even then, maybe not. Instead, say you're excited if you feel like you need to say something. Why? Because there are millions of dollars at risk in this project. You come in, you tell me you're nervous. I don't care how good your audition is. I'm going to be worried that you're going to be too nervous to perform on the day. You need to be able to relax the producers and the writers and the directors into realizing that their film and their their show is is working and that it's good and it's going to be okay. And if they and if you are telling them that you are nervous, then they are they're they're going to wonder if maybe you're nervous because the material isn't good enough for you to relax into it and just perform. So your job is to assure and to relax and to be confident in that casting room and to make everybody relaxed and happy and certain that you are able and confident about doing and playing that role. And speaking about worrying, you cannot worry about what they think. Here's the thing, acting is private. It's something very private that you do in a very public forum. Even if you're at home doing a monologue self-tape all by your lonesome, you still have that camera and you still, you're thinking about what that casting director wants and what that director wants. And that is not the state you want to get into. Stanislavski mentioned something called the creative flow or the creative state. And what he means by that and what some method actors think he means by that, though I think they're a little off, but that's my personal interpretation, is that you're so in the character that you don't even remember that there is an audience. You're just in that moment so fully that you are entirely that character. And I think that there can still be a rational part of your brain that understands that there is an audience and another actor you need to protect if it's a violent scene and all of that. But what I what he means is not that everything completely disappears, though sometimes it does. Sometimes you're so in the moment that that the world disappears and you're just that character in those circumstances. But what I see is actors are so worried about what people are going to think about them and their performance and that that they never get there. And the great performers, those great moments and my best performances, and I, and I see it on film, I, I, you know, and, and I see it in my self tapes are those moments when I can be in a completely private, unobserved action and thought where I where where I am behaving and I'm relaxed the way that we are when we think nobody is around or we're having a conversation with somebody and we don't think anybody is observing us your audience wants to experience you they want to experience you going through emotions and and going through things they don't want you to know that they are there. They want you to not know that they are there. They want you to be so open and vulnerable that if you saw that they were there, your behavior would change immediately. And it would change into something we would call bad acting because suddenly the actor feels um, tight and observed. But what we are going after, what what method actors are going after even though it's often misunderstood because they think they have to be able to completely forget that 
another world exists, which is schizophrenic. And I, I don't recommend schizophrenia as a form of acting. But to get into that that moment where the feeling of being observed vanishes and you can just be and you get there through practice you just have to do it so many times that you can just relax into it and just be actors must will inspiration into existence a lazy actor is not a working actor. And here's why. Because we need to be able to have such mastery over ourselves and our emotions and our intuitions and our instincts that the inspiration is just there, right? So when you are working as a series regular five, sometimes six days a week for 12 to 16 hours a day, and you need to cry and laugh and feel this and do that, the the show or, or the, the film, they, they need you to be able to do that immediately. They don't want an actor to be like, well, I'm not feeling inspired to have this imaginary conversation with my imaginary best friend on this show. So I'll be in my trailer until I feel inspired. And so many of you are sitting at home right now going, oh, I'll write my short film when I feel inspired. I'll tell you what, working writers never feel inspired. I heard Aaron Sorkin the other day say that he never feels like writing, ever. He never feels like sitting down and doing it, but he is a writer, so he sits down and he does it. Same thing as an actor. If you want to be a great actor, then you need to start getting control of your life now. You need to be motivated now. You must feel the fear and do it anyway. Feel the resistance and do it anyway. Those of you who are dedicated to working out, you know that there are days that you do not want to get up and go to the gym or go to your class, but you get up and you do it anyway. And it's the same thing with acting. Acting is a muscle to be able to feel these emotions, to be able to get into that creative state. You must will that inspiration into existence. And I know it's not easy and it's tricky and it's hard, but you say you want to be part of one of the hardest professions in the world to become successful in. Maybe not one of the hardest you know, professions to do. I would say that brain surgery is way harder. Um, I would say that farming in Central Africa where there is drought is way harder. But in quote, civilized society, um, where those types of, you know, this type of hardship that you are choosing, <laughs> it is a choice and it is not easy. If you want easy, then go be an Instagram influencer. That will be a lot easier and you'll probably become even more famous. This podcast, as always, is brought to you by We Audition. Use promo code HAG25 to get 25% off your lifetime membership to weaudition.com. Um, I highly recommend it, especially if you're looking for inspiration. Last night, I got to do a David Mamet scene from Glengarry Glen Ross that as a woman, I normally would not get to do, but this New York actor was working on that play and I got to run a couple scenes and it was fantastic for me. I mean, I could have done that all night long. It was wonderful because I love Mamet. I love that play. And it was, it was just great to be able to feel those words in my mouth because I never got to read Glengarry Glen Ross, you know, live before. And I have weaudition.com to thank for that. I just want to close by letting everyone know 
I may disappear for the next three months. Um, I am not going to be able to reply to any Instagram or email messages, nothing cryptic. I'm just on a project and uh, my hours are about to get very, very long. So the podcast may disappear for a little while. Don't worry, we will be back. And I um, would prefer that unless it's some sort of weird emergency, uh, just to let me have this time to focus on my work and not feel like I have to reply to anybody um, and this is June 7th. I expect to be pretty busy till the end of August. If anything changes, I will let you know. Thank you very much for all of your support. If you do feel like reaching out, um, I would prefer just to see you guys on iTunes. Rate and review. I love seeing those come in. Um, thank you, those of you who have done that. That's it. That's all I have for you. Break a leg and remember you are not alone. 